I looked at him eagerly, endeavoring to detect if only the faintest shadow of uneasiness. But he stood in front of my pistol, picking out the ripest cherries from his cap and spitting out the stones, which flew almost as far as my feet. to my new YouTube series, Root Lit, the place where we talk about classic but less known works of Russian literature. If you came across this channel for the first time, please check the previous episode, where I talk about The Shot, the novella by Alexander Pushkin, its narrators, and the idea of a Byronic anti-hero. Also, I do recommend reading this short story. The link to the translation in, is in the video description. Meanwhile, let's dive into this little masterpiece. Last time we paused at the moment when an outstanding event disrupts the monotonous life of young officers. During a dinner at Silvio's place, one of the officers, heated with wine, play and laughter of his comrades, insults Silvio by throwing a brass candlestick at him. This, of course, is a direct pretext of a duel, for officers' honors code there was no possibility to avoid armed confrontation after such an incident. Indeed, all people present at, at this party are absolutely convinced that the duel will take place immediately. None of us entertained the slightest doubt as to what the result would be, and we already looked upon our new comrade as a dead man, so new comrade meaning this young officer. The officer withdrew, saying that he was ready to answer for his offense in whatever way the banker liked. The play went on for a few minutes longer, but feeling that our host, which is Silvio, yeah, was no longer interested in the game, we withdrew one after the other and repaired to our respective quarters after having exchanged a few words upon the probability of there soon being a vacancy in the regiment. However, Silvio, despite his famed shooting skills, does not find the officer. This, according to the narrator, lowered him very much in the opinion of all our young fellows. Want of courage is the last thing to be pardoned by young men, who usually took upon bravery as the chief of all human virtues and the excuse for every possible fault. Again, I think so well put by Pushkin. The duels as a way of dealing with the conflict came to Russian Empire relatively late, during the reign of Catherine the Second or Catherine the Great. Then the duels became a thing in Russia. It prompted the Empress to issue a 1787 manifesto on duels, which called duels foreign influence and prescribed punishment for organizing a duel and participation in it. But even these laws, for the most part, remained on paper, and the cases of duelists very rarely reached the court. And in these cases, many were forgiven or uh, received a significantly milder punishment, like losing your rank, for example. As Ledgale Academy notes, the need to protect the honor became strongly embodied in the hearts of Russian mobility and military class that often ignored all the prohibitions and took the risk to participate in duels. Thus, Silvia's decision to pardon his offender would affect his reputation in the eyes of his companions, even though the duels were illegal and punishable. Irina Reifman, in her wonderful paper on duels, in particular Pushkin's duels, points out that only with Fyodor Dostoevsky an idea of declining a duel was introduced. Dostoevsky was the first Russian writer to explore in earnest ways for his fictional duelists to decline a duel. In doing so, he was keenly aware of Russian lit literature's traditional hostility to the very idea of backing out of a duel. He was also aware of the moral problems that the rejection of the honor code would pose. Dostoevsky, of course, belonged to a different generation. He was si just 16 when Pushkin died, and the majority of his work came out in 1860s after his Sibir Siberian exile. So you can see that even in mid-19th century, this code was still influential. Shortly after this incident, Silvio receives a letter that prompts him to announce his sudden departure. 
After the regiment gathers in the, at his place for the farewell party, Isilvio asks the narrator to stay behind. And this is when the truth about his decision not to fight comes out. I could describe my forbearance of generosity alone, but I will not tell a lie. If I could have chastised R, which is this officer, without the least risk of, of my own life, I would never have pardoned him. I looked at Silvio with astonishment. Such a confession completely astounded me. Silvio continued, Exactly so. I have no right to expose myself to death. Six years ago, I received a slap in the face, and my enemy still lives. And then he tells the story of how, after being slapped by a young officer, Silvio and his offender came together for a duel. The dawn was just breaking. I was standing at the appointed place with my three seconds. With inexplicable impatience, I awaited my opponent. The spring sun rose, and it was already growing hot. I saw him coming in the distance. He was walking on foot, accompanied by one second. We advanced to meet him. He approached, holding his cap filled with black cherries. The seconds measured twelve paces for us. I had to fire first, but my agitation was so great that I could not depend upon the steadiness of my hand and in order to give myself time to become calm, I ceded to him the first shot. My adversary would not agree to this. It was decided that we should cast lots. The first number fell to him, the constant favorite of fortune. He took aim, and his bullet went through my cap. It was now my turn. His life at last was in my hands. I looked at him eagerly, endeavoring to detect if only the faintest shadow of uneasiness but he stood in front of my pistol, picking out the ripest cherries from his cap and spitting out the stones, which flew almost as far as my feet. His indifference annoyed me beyond measure. What is the use, thought I, of depriving him of life when he attaches no value whatever to it? A malicious thought flashed through my mind. I lowered my pistol. You don't seem to be ready for death just at present, I said to him. You wish to have your breakfast. I do not wish to hinder you. You are not hindering me in the least, replied him. Have a, the goodness to fire, or just as you please, the shot remains yours. I shall always be ready at your service. The rules for the duels in Russia, again completely illegal from the government's point of view, were famous for their brutality. According to the Western authors, a legalized murder, as opposed to typical European duel, of the 19th century, where the enemies would be at a stationary position at uh, 25 or 35 paces or even farther, in Russian duel a typical distance was 50 to 20 paces or less, which made it very easy for the rivals to kill each other. The duelists stood 25-35 steps for each other in a parallel line so that their opponent was on the right side. They moved by this line towards the barrier that had a distance of 15 steps between them, and after a command, duelists stopped and made their shots. This, this was the most dangerous version of the duel, and fatal outcomes were common because the opponents stood just 25 to 35 steps from each other and not, you know, from the barrier, and after a command, shots were made simultaneously. Just to give you a context, Pushkin was involved in many duels, though most of them were cancelled. He fought in five duels, and it ultimately led to his untimely death at the age of 37. He initiated a duel with the French officer Georges Charles Dantes and was lethally wounded there and died several days after that. I would recommend taking a look to the link uh, to a blog post by Book Addict that lists not only all of Pushkin's duels, but also the circumstances that led to them. You'd be surprised. I think it truly gives you the idea of a scope of that social problem that took away so many lives, including his own. So what happened to Silvio after he stepped out of this duel with the officer? Join me next time for the concluding remarks about the shot, the ironic treatment of Byronic hero, and the role of duels in Russian literature. Check the links for the English translation of the shot, as well as the history of Pushkin's duels. Please make sure you like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.